Hello everyone, welcome back to part three of the Impact of Leases and Valuation video series. As always, I recommend that you watch part one and two if you have not. In part one, we cover the accounting side of the operating versus capital lease discussion. In part two, we talk about the necessary adjustments that you need to make in your financial analysis when you do capitalize an operating lease and convert it into a capital lease. Now in part three, we're gonna be taking those adjustments and we're gonna be talking about them and how they impact the multiple analysis and then also look at a real life example so it should be a relatively short video so the previous video in part two we talked about the capital adjustment which is discounting the future lease payments back to the present and then considering that a uh, an equivalent to debt the income adjustment adjusts our operating income so our ebit and it adds back input and interest expense and it also uh, ad adjusts our net income by adding back our um, our rental expense or operating expense and then subtracting depreciation and um, input and interest. Uh, the profitability adjustment talks about the uh, return on capital and other metrics that can be used and how the, those adjustments should relate to the income adjustments that we make. And the final is the free cash flow adjustment. And essentially, the free cash flow adjustment, if the present value of the operating lease in today relative to one year before increases, then that increase, that difference is reported as additional capital expenditures. And so that will impact your free cash flow calculation. Okay. Now, talking about the impact of leases, it has an effect on the DCF value, and it also has an effect on the multiples analysis. So recategorizing operating lease expenses into financing expenses affects the firm's cash flows by changing the operating income net capital expenditures and cost of capital and so these then impact the free cash flow that is projected in the model and therefore will impact the dcf value projection okay and so we talked about this in part two where we showed an example but uh, before the ca capitalization of an operating lease and after and how with ebit increases because we add inputted interest then depreciation increases because we now uh, calculate a depreciation charge on the newly capitalized lease we also talk about the increase in capital expenditures due to the free cash flow adjustment and that therefore increases unleveraged free cash flow by two dollars and therefore will impact the valuation of your dcf model so although the enterprise value of the firm increases due to the added present value of operating leases to debt, the conversion usually has no impact on equity valuation. As long as the debt ratio stays stable and the operating leases are fairly valued, treating operating leases as debt should have a neutral effect on the value of equity of the firm. So we talked about how from an enterprise value perspective, because we are discounting the, the future lease liabilities back to the present, that discounted summed up value is added to net debt. But with equity value, that is not part of equity value and so it shouldn't change. So consider the previous statement, treating operating leases as debt should have a neutral effect on the value of the equity in this firm. This means that all equity value multiples should see no change. And this is true except for the uh, price to free cash flow. So equity to free cash flow, that should uh, that is not true because free cash flow will change. So the amount of uh, cash flow projected per share or the overall free cash flow projected by the company will change due to the adjustments that we make in the free cash flow calculation. So while uh, the price to earnings and price to book value ratios will stay the same because they are equity value, because whatever you have to pay attention to whatever the metrics are in in the in the multiple. So even though the price, the equity value of the company may not be uh, affected, the free cash flow measure is. And so you cannot use this without adjusting for it. Okay. So conversely, enter any enterprise value multiples will be impacted by this recategorization as the present value of operating leases will increase the debt added to the metric. Consider the EV to EBITDA multiple. So the enterprise value to the EBITDA multiple is the market value of equity plus the market value of debt plus the uh, minority interest and preferred stock uh, over EBITDA. Now to adjust that, we have to now add uh, the present value of operating lease, and which is considered an equivalent to debt, and then also adjust our EBITDA by adding operating lease expenses back, okay? So what about the EV to EBIT multiple? So in this case, you know, same thing, EV uh, enterprise value over EBIT. Uh, in this case, we adjust uh, EV once again by adding back the present value of operating leases, which is considered debt. And with EBIT, we're adding back the inputted interest expense. And this is one of the income adjustments that we talked about in part two, okay? Now, 
this is essentially the impacts that, you know, these are the general impacts and the adjustments that need to be made. From a DCF value perspective, you need to adjust the free cash flow calculation. Um, and so that it originates from the free cash flow adjustment of changes in the present value of operating leases from one period to the next. And for the effect on multiples analysis, you have to adjust enterprise value, EBIT, uh, EBITDA, net income, uh, free cash flow. All of those measures need to be adjusted. So when you do calculate your, your multiples analysis, you are once again calculating them based on a capitalized operating lease. Now let's look at a real world example. So this is CVS's Caremark's 2009 balance sheet. And so we talked about how companies are, are obligated to display their leases. So for the first five years, they're, uh, they have to explicitly uh, display the uh, lease expenses that, that, that they are projecting for each of those years. And then after that, they just can sum it up and just define it as thereafter, right? And so we talked about if finding the average, or, or, or in this case, the company assumed that they took the 2014 value and they extended it all the way out, right? So you can use different metrics to kind of split up the 17,000, but essentially with the capital adjustment, what we're doing is we're taking these numbers and we're discounting them back to the present to sum them up and therefore uh, get a, P a PVOL, uh, right? Present value of operating lease, which we can add to our net debt. Now, where do we get our discount rate? Well, we can look at the again, the bonds that are outstanding for the company and get a general sense of the, their cost of debt. In this case, you know, we'll assume just a kind of like a general number, a flat number of 5%, and that will be the cost of debt. But again, it depends on the company. Maybe a company is not that doesn't have such a good relationship with creditors. And so their cost of debt might be higher, might be at eight, 9%, or it might be lower. Right. In this case, we're just going to assume 5%. And so your assumption is based on the outstanding bonds and a subordinate debt that, is a vi that the company has right, and is obligated to pay. So what we do now is that we're taking these numbers, we're taking these operating leases, we're taking those numbers, and then with the thereafter number, the $17,477, we're splitting that up, right? And so we split that up in, uh, so looking at 2015, so looking at 2015 right over here, we assumed $1,657 was being paid for 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, so on, right? And then we discount that using the 5% discount rate. We discount that to the PV number, and then we sum that up, and that is our uh, present value of operating leases of $18,648. It's actually... Um, it, in millions for the for the balance sheet, but we'll just keep it simple for eighteen thousand six hundred forty eight dollars. OK, so that's the capital adjustment for the company. Now, what about the income adjustment? So um, CVS Caremark had uh, adjust uh, EBITDA of about ten thousand two hundred forty four dollars and the operating lease payment uh, for twenty. 2010 was 2094 dollars so what we do is we add that 2994 dollars back to ebitda and there that we get our adjusted ebitda right to adjust for ebit we have to take the ebit that is reported and add back inputted interest expense so we take the present value of the operating lease multiply it by the cost of debt which in this case is assumed to be five percent and so that number is added back to ebit which in this case is eight thousand two hundred ninety three dollars so we add that number and we get adjusted ebit of nine thousand two hundred twenty five dollars so that's how it's done. Now, what about the multiples adjustment? So there are many multiples that you can adjust, but let's look at a EV to adjusted EBITDA multiple. So we talked about enterprise value. We are assuming that enterprise value is $84,625. And the what we do is we take that present value of the operating lease. We assume that it's an equivalent to debt. And so we add it to the enterprise value of the company to get $103,273. And then the EBITDA measure, because we adjusted for previously, we adjusted that to 12318 And we calculate the new adjusted EV to EBITDA measure of 8.38. Um, uh, and actually, let's just, let's just look at an example. Let's see how it has changed previous to the unadjusted numbers versus the adjusted numbers. So let, I, this is totally unplanned. Let me just uh, get a piece of paper. Um, oops. I dropped that piece of paper. Okay. Um, so we have uh, unadjusted EV of $84,625. And we have unadjusted EBITDA of $10,224. So let me pull up my handy dandy calculator. So 84,625 divided by 10,224. So the uh, unadjusted EV to EBITDA measure is 8.27. And so this is compared to the 8.38.
So in this case, the EV to EBITDA measure actually increased. So the multiple increased, and that could impact, once again, the overall projection that you are looking for. So if you're calculating the mean or median of the, of the industry, and you know that this is uh, the multiple is a little bit higher then all of a sudden you know your valuation projection changes and so this is the value of once again of the uh, adjustments of the lease capitalization okay so what about the free cash flow adjustment so this is uh, the 2008 present value of operating leases and this is the 2009 present value of operating leases right and as you can see so the operating leases the pvol increased from sixteen thousand four hundred fifty dollars to eighteen thousand six hundred forty eight dollars and so that increase is essentially reported as additional capex so the difference between the two right the difference between the two is two thousand one hundred ninety eight dollars and we make that adjustment by adding that to um to capex so in this case if if uh with the ebit adjustment oh actually here's another good thing let's take a look let's see if free cash flow just assuming only a change in capex and an adjusted ebit so uh capex uh, now increases by two thousand one hundred ninety eight dollars and now we're going to go to adjusted ebit adjusted ebit uh, oh, only increased by about a thousand dollars so in this case our free cash flow would actually decline okay so that is what happens when you make that free cash flow adjustment so in this example okay so once again this is just looking at the uh the uh the different considerations that you need to to look at when you are using a financial analysis and converting an operating lease into a capital lease uh so that's pretty much it. If you do have any questions, I would recommend that you comment below or reach out to me. Um, if you did enjoy this and find this video really helpful, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it took a while to make these videos and uh, hopefully they were helpful. And it, the best way you can show your support is by subscribing to the channel or liking the video. Uh, as well, if you're interested in maybe, you know, the IPO process or other investment banking related content, uh, DCF calculations and uh, models, or, or if you're interested in the financial markets and investing, I do recommend that you check out my Seeking Alpha profile, where I do publish a lot of research and apply a lot of these techniques that I teach on my channel. So I'd recommend that you check out that as well. I've linked it in the video description. So as always, if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe and have a great day, guys. Thank you.